we're going to replace the blades as well. Previously on Sailing SV Sarian, we shared tips on how to service your wind generator, took you off to the early beach markets, and enjoyed the fireworks at a local festival celebrating the life of the Great Barrier Reef. Some cruising folk that we had met invited us to join them for a meet-up in Nara Inlet, which is just across the passage from Airly Beach. This bay is astoundingly beautiful, with its mix of bushland and rainforest, and huge rock formations which time and weather have worn away. There are mangrove inlets, a delightful beach where we saw baby stingrays, and there are waterfalls dotted up and down the bay, one of which we're heading to in this very moment. Years ago, Aboriginal people roamed these hills and sheltered in the caves. They collected berries and seeds, harvested oysters growing along the shore, and enjoyed great hunting here with a variety of bird life and a thriving wild goat population. Oh, look at those ferns. How beautiful. Yeah. yeah great little spot. There's another worldly feel here. It's very spiritual, and we both feel very strongly connected to the planet in this beautiful bay. As we headed back to Sarian, we noticed a bunch of names written over rocks along the shoreline. Now this is pretty cool. Back in the 70s, cruising yachts would write their vessel names on the rocks to say that they had been here. And I love seeing this part of cruising history. So I was excited to add our name to the list. Unfortunately, Parks Department have strictly forbidden this practice, so I couldn't.
Magical spot, isn't it? <laughs> We're so lucky. We're in the Nara Inlet in the uh, Wet Sundays. We've just been down to a waterfall, absolutely beautiful. And uh, Darren's just off helping some cruisers fix their motor. I think they've got a dirty fuel in their engine, so that's causing them some problems. So I'm just hanging out, enjoying the environment. So I thought I'd share it with you. It's a beautiful day. Next day we took off for Stonehaven Anchorage as we were given the tip that a little outcrop called Bird Island was an excellent spot for a drift dive. We had a little bit of a, a tiny issue with our siphon breaker. We were making a, quite a lot of water in the bilge and um, the, the problem has been that, that this uh, was, was something that I've actually done. I've over tightened the, the clamp on this particular piece. I'm not sure whether the camera can pick that up but it's, yeah. it's actually crushed the pipe and split it. So there was a fair fountain of water um, spraying out all over the engine. So we bypassed the siphon breaker just to get us into the next anchorage, but um, now the problem being that we have to switch the seacock off every time, otherwise the, the engine will flood. So we've, we've come up with a little bit of an idea to fix it, um, because we can't really do anything with that. But we've, we've got a little bit of old 25mm conduit, it's just electrical conduit, and uh, we're just going to cut that piece off and poke it up inside there, and maybe with a little bit of silicon and, and um, a couple of hose clamps, we, with a bit of luck we, we might get rolling again. Anyway, I'll get back to you with the uh, end result and see how we go. Get on you, my honey. Okay, the 25mm conduit worked quite a treat. I, th I think it's actually better than the other side. I just put a little bit of silicon on there and a hose clamp around it, and um, it, it's right as rain. Um, we were just lucky enough that we had a piece on board that would um, that would work in this particular scenario. So we were quite lucky this time. Not that it's a major one. We could have, we still could have uh, gotten out of it without uh, too much trouble. But uh, anyway, we'll go and fit it up and see how it works. This was the pipe I had to pull off to uh, bypass the, the breaker. It virtually just comes out of the engine. fella there just vents into the exhaust. That's where it gets the air back from when uh, the engine stops it, sucks the air back through there and breaks the siphon. 
So welcome to our laundry room. This is one way that we access our engine room and it's a pleasant little area. <laughs> we also stack all of our supplies and spares in here. If you want to switch the, the, the old seacock on and start the engine. It, give it a crank. Okay. See what happens. Okay, this is the engine seacock. <laughs> I'll just turn it on. So after making the repair, the day turned out lovely and we headed off to see what underwater beauty we could find. Bird Island is a nesting area, so you're not allowed to access the beach. However, we threw out our anchor and had a really neat time drifting back and forth along the northern side of the island. Swimming in the sea Her eyes as bright as crystal waters in the day Swimming around with curiosity There must be more to life than what those eyes could say One night she swims up to the shore to a wonderful sound she's never heard before There stood a tall and handsome man on the beach He played a tune and he tapped his feet And he sang, come away with me Sail seven seas with me Run away with me you, me, and the sea Come away with me Sail seven seas with me Run away with me You, me, and the sea Their eyes met in the moonlight he stood up shocked by what he saw That gorgeous girl in the water Her fishy tail and all He walked into the sea to meet her She floated frozen in the dark The ocean sent him what he dreamed of now they're a lift's distance apart And he said Come away with me Sail seven seas with me Run away with me You, me, and the sea Come away with me Sail seven seas with me Run away with me You, me, and the sea She swam away in a hurry Confused by these feelings of love 
But every night he'd go to meet her She'd watch him play his soulful heart He bought a boat in the harbor And told his friends what he would do That night he went down to the seaside And asked her if she'd say I do And she said I'll come away with you I'll sell the seven seas for you I'll run away with you oh, Of course I'll say I do I'll come away with you I'll sell the seven seas for you I'll run away with you oh, Of course I'll say I do Come away with me Sail seven seas with me, run away with me You, me and the sea, come away with me Sail seven seas with me, run away with me You, me and the sea You, me and the sea This life can be really challenging at times. The environment can be both stunning and unforgiving at once. Little things such as a split hose can sink your home in the blink of an eye. Endless nights of rolly anchorages can make you want to swim miles to shore and chain yourself to a large flat bed so you can get a decent night's sleep, let alone trying to cook a meal when your oven keeps swinging back and forth. But these things are no comparison to the beauty we get to experience whilst living this life. We're connected to nature on every level. And there isn't a day that goes by when we're not blown away by one experience or another. So with a few great days, hanging out with friends and enjoying some beautiful snorkeling, we packed up and took off for more destinations unknown. Between my toes And the salty air that fills my nose Time to sail the seven seas Time to follow the breeze Sun shining high above This is the place I dream of I can't tell you where I'm going But I know that I'm on my way So sit back and enjoy the journey And live every moment of the day Time for change Time to find a better way Going about my days Pack my bags Hit the road Who knows what tomorrow will hold Take me to that place Sunny days, a warm embrace Where the water's clear Living life without a fear I can't tell you where I'm going But I know that I'm on my way So sit back and enjoy the journey And live every moment of the day Live every moment of the day
Hi everyone! Thank you for watching the video. We really hope you enjoyed it. I particularly had a lot of fun editing this one. I just loved that time that we spent at the waterfall in Nara Inlet. It just... the sound of the water was just so encompassing. It was just... it was beautiful. A really beautiful time. So yeah, we just uh, had a great question from a fellow called Ian, one of uh, our wonderful followers. Hello Ian, thanks for your question. Um, and he wanted to know what are some of the things that we have learnt while living abroad. And I guess uh, one of the things that we've learnt is not to be afraid to make changes to systems and design. Would you agree? Absolutely. Um, I guess as technology changes, um, sometimes you have to change things to, uh, to move with the times a little bit. Um, if something's not really working for you, I'd really suggest to, to change it or do a little bit of research first and see what uh, possibly could work. Look at other people's um, designs and systems yeah that that'd be my advice um yeah because if it's not working just I, I would change it yeah yeah one of the things for us um it's more of a design kind of thing actually um because there's only really the two of us living on board and <clears throat> plenty of room for guests uh in separate cabin but we don't really need to have two heads so uh one of the heads got taken out some time ago and has kind of been in this iffy stage and just recently we converted it fully into a laundry and storage area which for us has actually been really great so um, means that everything can get packed away nicely rather than um, you know the extra things like sup boards and stuff like that doesn't have to be hanging around on deck which we think is cluttering up the deck not a good thing um, and uh, also really nice to have the ability to uh, wash your clothes on board when you're away from land uh, for long periods of time. So yeah, we felt that we could um, easily do without the uh, the extra head if people do come on board. We really don't mind sharing. So um, to us, it's a luxury to have two two um, two heads. We'd rather have the space. So don't be afraid to chuck your loo out. <laughs> 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 it certainly worked for us. <laughs> but yeah, just don't be frightened to change things if it's not working for you, that's for sure. Yeah, yeah. One of the other things um, I'll just quickly mention is the um, the main sheet winch. Uh, you used to whack your hand on it every time you were grinding on it. So Darren actually, um, you know, this boat's 20-something years old and so whoever had it before us was putting up with that all the time. <laughs> so Darren actually mounted it on this lovely wooden block so it lifted it up a wee bit and now you can grind away without bashing your hands around. So <laughs> there's another one, another easy one. Yeah. Mm. Yeah, just because somebody put it there doesn't mean it really works that well. You know, people sometimes just put up with stuff that um, it's unnecessary. Is, is sort of average. Yeah. And, uh, you know, it can be certainly made better. Yeah. Yeah, so that's it. That's our two little pointers. Thank you so much again for watching. We Please um, uh, keep your com comments coming and your questions coming. We've really been enjoying them. So that's it for us. Ciao for now. All right. See you on the next one.